choice answers and decide which one. Well, first we're going to decide, okay, which one kind of looks like my answer. And then we're going to talk about which one's the right answer. I do not expect for you to have the correct answer word for word written down. Okay? I need you in the ballpark. All right? That means the entire ballpark. That does not mean just in the four bases. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, so the first question says, paragraph three is important to the selection because it shows blank. A, that the narrator is devious and enjoys testing the limits placed by his mother. B, how the narrator, narrator disobeyed a rule before. C, why the narrator decided to point at rainbows. Or D, that the narrator has defined his mother, defied his mother before and learned that her warnings were not necessarily truthful. Look at your answer, what you wrote down for question one, and then look back at these answer choices. Which one do you think is the correct answer, Everett? D. D, that the narrator has defied his mother before and learned that her warnings were not necessarily truthful. What? Remember it talks about in the passage, make sure it's not wobbling, please. Um. It talks about in the passage how she had mentioned something about rainbows and he figured out that that was not true. Okay, that's what they're talking about in paragraph three. Question two, read this sentence from paragraph eight. I did nothing fancy on the way home. No figure eights, no wiggling of the handlebars, no hands in my pockets, no eyes, cl no close eye moment. The author uses this sentence to A, share how the wounded ankle deflated his joy of riding his bike. B, explain why he no longer did tricks with his bike. C, make excuses for riding the bike normally. D, describe his trip back to his house. King, out of these answer choices for number two, which one best fits what you and Jacob said? D. D? For number two. Oh, A. A. So he's sharing this to share that after this incident, he was no longer joyful. He was no longer happy. He was going to go home and he was probably going to get in trouble. Question three, what can the reader infer about the, the author's mother? A, she lies frequently to her son. B, she warned her son of hungry dogs on Sarah Street to discourage him of going there. C, she set unrealistic rules for her son to follow. Or D, she thought her son would get in trouble if, we went, if he went to Sarah Street. What do y'all think is the best answer choice after, oh, you can't even see num number three, my bad, y'all. Which one do you think is the best answer choice? B, she warned her son of hungry dogs on Sarah Street to discourage him from going there. I heard one group say she lies so that they'll do what she tells them to or something like that. Yes. I think it was Spencer. No, that yes. wasn't. She tells stories so kids don't Yeah, she, she makes things up so that kids don't do things that might get them in trouble or hurt themselves. All right, number four, the author's use of a simile in paragraph three creates a feeling of A, confidence, B, excitement, C, apprehension, D, amazement. The simile was the one about um, the finger. Yeah. Slowly opening like a bean plant or something like yeah. that. What do you think the best answer choice is? Confidence. Not confidence. It's slowly opening. Slowly opening. Logan. Do you all know what this term apprehension means? It means Suspense. nervousness. Yeah. I got you think it's wrong. C? Yes. yes, it's C. Creating a feeling of apprehension, of nervousness, making you feel like, okay, what's going to happen? Five, what lesson does the narrator learn while riding his bike where it was forbidden? A, unknown routes should be traveled with someone. B, growing up can be painful. C, curiosity leads to grand discoveries. D, testing limits isn't always beneficial. What lesson do you think he learned? Spencer? D. Testing limits isn't always beneficial, okay? Doing 
what you're told not to do, thinking that it might be okay, is not going to end well for you. All right? Question six in paragraph four, the author uses the phrase false rainbow warnings to illustrate that the na narrator was what? Unsure of whether it would rain that day, disbelieving <laughs> of his mother's words, told that pointing at rainbows would cause freckles, or given incorrect information about rainbows. What do you think is the best answer choice here? Given incorrect information about rainbows? I mean, I guess he technically was, right? But what do you think, Jacob? B, disbelieving of his mother's words. Yes, that was right. Sorry. Um, we know the next because one. he's saying she made all this stuff up, right, to keep me out of trouble. So I think she's making this stuff up about going down Sarah Street. Okay. So disbelieving of his mother's words. Question. That was six. Question seven, what can the reader tell about the narrator's feelings at the end of paragraph nine? A, he knew he was to blame of what had happened. B, he wished he'd not been scared of the dog. C, he hoped his mother would take pity on him. D, he was embarrassed of the story, the sorry shape he was in. What do you think, Everett? A, he knew he was to blame for what had happened. Yep. All right, number eight, the point of view from which the story is told gives the reader insight into A, the mother's reasons for lying to the narrator, B, what the neighbors think of the narrator's experience, C, how dangerous Sarah Street really was, or D, the narrator's reasons for disobeying his mother. It is D. So what point of view is the story told from? So first person, right? And if it's told from first person point of view, I know what about the narrator? Everything, his thoughts and his feelings. So he's telling us about his thoughts and feelings and that's what that first person point of view helps us understand. If it was from third person um, objective, we wouldn't know anybody's thoughts and feelings and we wouldn't know what was going on in his head. All right, number nine, what is the best summary of the selection? A, the narrator rides his bike on Sarah Street despite his mother's warnings. He returns home and is discovered by his mother. B, a young boy disobeys his mother and rides a bike on a dangerous street. C, despite his mother's warnings, a young boy rides his bike on Sarah Street and ends up coming back injured and ready for a punishment. D, the narrator gets hurt after riding his bike along a dangerous street. Spencer? C. C. When you're at looking at a summary question, you need to make sure that the summary that you are choosing has information from the beginning, the middle, and the, and end. the end. That is very important. And make sure it's important information, not unimportant. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then finally, question 10. Read the following dictionary entry. Which definition matches the word litter as it is used in paragraph one? What is the correct answer here, Manuel? B, definition two, a messy collection of things scattered about. A good strategy to use here is to go replace the word in the paragraph with the definition to help you get a under, better understanding. Um, the test that you're going to be taking tomorrow has 17 questions, okay? Two of those questions are short answer written response questions. What strategy should you be using? Okay. 17. What strategy? The race. Yes, race. The race strategy. Restate the question, answer the question, cite evidence to prove your answer, and then explain it if necessary. There are also revising and editing questions, which look, you've seen them before in fourth grade when you did the writing star. The questions that say, like, what change, if any, should be made in sentence five? Okay, there's some of those questions on there as well. I have no concerns about any of my kiddos doing well on this test. What if um, we fail? So, if, well, if you fail, you can make corrections on Friday. Okay? Yes. All right. You can stop the recording. Yay. Okay.